Hi, I'm Rainey. And I'm Tyler. We're graduate students in the Curriculum and Instruction Department at the University of Montana. We made the following video as a guide to help teachers and administrators develop an inclusive classroom. We will cover topics like the benefits of inclusion, some best practices, and provide tips to bring inclusion into your classroom. Please use the sidebar to follow along with the presentation. Closed captioning is also provided along the bottom of the screen. So what is an inclusive school? An inclusive school is one in which general education and special education are no longer separate from each other and are completely indistinguishable. The school is restructured so that all students have an opportunity to learn together. It changes the classroom to build a community where everyone has equal opportunities to participate and express themselves. In an inclusive classroom, supports are portable and pull-out services are replaced by bringing the services into the regular classroom. Universal design for learning is implemented to accommodate the instructional needs for all students. Why is inclusion good for everyone? An inclusive classroom still offers the same high quality curriculum just with the addition of Universal Design for Learning or UDL strategies to help all students have equal learning opportunities. Inclusion is also good for all students in the classroom, not just the students with special needs or behavioral differences. In an inclusive classroom, students get experience working together with students with a variety of ability levels. In these classroom settings, conversations about equality, group membership, and opportunity naturally occur, which help all children to feel like they are accepted and a part of the classroom community. A community setting helps to combat issues such as bullying, as children feel that they are all working together and looking out for one another. An inclusive classroom is also an opportunity for students to see how to behave appropriately in a classroom or in certain social settings. Is there a difference between inclusion and mainstreaming or integration? It's important to note that inclusion is not the same thing as mainstreaming or integration. Integration and mainstreaming tend to be concerned principally with disability and special educational needs, and implied learners changing or becoming ready for or deserving of accommodations by mainstreaming. By contrast, inclusion is about the child's rights to participate and the school's duty to accept the child. Inclusion rejects the use of special schools or classrooms to separate students with disabilities from students without disabilities. A premium is placed upon full participation by students with disabilities and upon respect for their social, civil, and educational rights. Inclusion gives students with and without disabilities additional skills, such as collaboration, teamwork, and problem solving, that they can use in and out of the classroom. Legal Implications of Inclusion not only is inclusion good for all types of learners, but appropriate degrees of inclusion are also required by law. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, does not support an all or nothing education system in which children with disabilities attend either regular or special education classes. Instead, the act requires schools to offer a continuum of services for students with disabilities. The Least Restrictive Environment, or LRE, one of the six principles of IDEA requires that children with disabilities receive a free and appropriate education in the same classrooms as their non-disabled peers, to the greatest extent appropriate. The degree of inclusion varies from student to student and is very flexible. As a student develops, the maximum appropriate inclusion in the general classroom can develop too. How can best practices be introduced in your classroom? In education, Best practices is defined as a wide range of individual activities, policies, and programmatic approaches to achieve positive change in student attitudes or academic behaviors. When developing an inclusive classroom, there are several important aspects to ensure best practices. Person-first language is important when working with students who have a disability. This puts an emphasis on the person, not the disability, and it helps them to fit in and be an accepted member of the classroom. It's important that students care more about how they're similar instead of how they're different. An example of person-first language would be to use the term such as a child who has dyslexia instead of saying a dyslexic child. UDL is another important aspect to best practices in an inclusive classroom. UDL helps a teacher develop a curriculum that gives all students an equal opportunity to learn. It's a blueprint for creating instructional goals, methods, materials, and assessments that work for everyone by using a flexible approach that can be customized and adjusted for individual needs. Guidelines of UDL require that multiple means of representation are provided. This helps to maximize every student's strengths because it does not limit instruction to only engaging one sense. It allows all of the senses to be engaged and used in the learning experience. By providing information in multiple ways, students can work to their strengths while building understanding through multiple sense avenues. 
A second guideline to UDL is to provide multiple means of action and expression. Learners differ in the ways that they navigate a learning environment and express what they know. There is not one means of action and expression that will be optimal for all learners. Providing options for action and expression is essential. The final guideline for UDL is to provide multiple means of engagement. Learners differ markedly in the ways in which they can be engaged or motivated to learn. Information that does not engage learners' cognition is in fact inaccessible. Relevant information goes unnoticed and unprocessed, not allowing the child to learn. Providing multiple options for engagement is the only way to attract all students' attention and engage them in the learning process. Classroom Community Building A welcoming and accepting classroom is key to the successful creation of an inclusive learning environment. Maslow's hierarchy of needs states that both psychological and safety needs must be met before a person can address their needs related to social acceptance and a sense of belonging. However, many believe that a student's social and belonging needs must first be addressed and that self-esteem comes from a sense of belonging. Many schools push students to achieve so they can belong, instead of helping students feel belonging before asking them to achieve. Creating that classroom community environment can help students feel accepted and appreciated and provides a great background for collaboration, understanding, and academic success. It can be very simple to create a classroom community. At the beginning of the school year, students can participate in icebreaker games and get to know you activities so they can learn about each other and begin to see their commonalities and understand their differences. Students can also participate in teamwork skill building activities so that they are better able to see and apply each other's strengths and create group learning experiences. Even these simple activities can help to build a strong classroom community in which individuals are accepted and appreciated. Response to Intervention, or RTI, is another inclusion model. Instead of the wait to fail model that waits until students show signs of failure before intervening, RTI is a multi-tiered approach that identifies a student's support needs early in their academic career. The multi-tier approach is used to efficiently differentiate instruction for students by offering increasing intensities of instruction and offering specific research-based interventions to match student needs. The first, or bottom tier, of the RTI triangle is where all students receive high-quality, scientifically-based instruction provided by qualified personnel to ensure that their difficulties are not due to inadequate instruction. Students not showing adequate progress under Tier 1 instruction are moved up to Tier 2. In Tier 2, students are provided with increasingly intensive instruction matched to their needs on the basis of levels of performance and rates of progress. This instruction often takes place in a small group setting. If a student isn't showing adequate progress through Tier 2 instruction, they are then considered for the more intensive instruction in Tier 3. Students receiving Tier 3 instruction participate in individualized intensive instruction interventions that target the student's skill deficits. If a student isn't showing adequate progress in Tier 3 instruction, they can be evaluated and considered for special education services. It is important to remember that a student's placement in any of the three tiers of instruction is not fixed. For example, if a student receiving Tier 3 instruction begins showing progress with fewer supports, they can move back into Tier 2 or even Tier 1 instruction. Natural proportion is important to keep in mind in an inclusive classroom. Natural proportion ensures that the percentage of students with special needs in any particular class does not significantly exceed the percentage in the school as a whole. This ratio should also be similar to that of the population in the community in which the school is located. If too many students with disabilities are placed together or clustered, the range of needs will make the class difficult to teach and many of the benefits of an inclusive education, such as peer models and high expectations, will be lost. When children with severe disabilities are clustered in a classroom, they are often put in a separate part of the classroom with an aide or paraprofessional, which eliminates opportunities for them to have meaningful interaction with their classmates. A quick start guide for inclusion in your classroom. Use the following eight tips to start implementing inclusion in your classroom. Number one, practice person first language. Number two, avoid terms that project an unnecessarily negative connotation like deformed, poor, unfortunate, or victim. Number three, make supports and assistive technology available to all students, not just students with disabilities. This will lessen the isolation an individual using supports can feel and help all students be successful learners. Number four, 
think of barriers to learning and try to come up with alternatives to eliminate those barriers. Number five, have students work collaboratively. This can be done in a variety of ways. You can have students work in a buddy system, which helps build relationships, and it increases community interaction for all students. You could also develop a school-based peer mentoring program. In a peer mentoring program, the relationship between the mentor and the mentee gives the mentee a sense of being connected to the larger community, where they may otherwise feel lost. Group projects are another great way to get students to work collaboratively. However, in group projects, it's important to emphasize equal input and roles for all members of the group to ensure relevant participation by all members and equal opportunities of expression. Number six, hold all students to high expectations. You want to push them to achieve to their highest abilities. Even if you have to reduce the workload for some students, you can still hold high expectations for them. Number seven, provide a variety of ways for students to express themselves and their knowledge. Students work harder when they have some choice in what they're doing. Number eight, develop lessons with children on both the high end and the low end of academic abilities in mind. Don't build a lesson thinking only of the middle. This helps to give all children opportunities to learn to their highest ability. We hope this video will help you implement inclusion into your classroom. The resources listed are helpful if you have any questions along the way. With careful thought and consideration, all children can learn together in your classroom and school.